The Race to the Top Fund is a $4.35 billion set aside within the Recovery Act that is designed to incent and reward states for doing large-scale statewide comprehensive reforms across four specific areas that were in the statute, and I'll talk about those in a second. Uh, but the idea here is that we're looking for states to do the big, bold initiatives. It's not a pick-and-choose menu. It's comprehensive reform across all of the areas um, on the theory that what we need in education to really break through and make significant change happen, to really increase the number of students who graduate from high school ready for college and careers, that we need a, a sort of all-fronts assault um, on the inertia that stalls so many of the education reforms that we've been engaged in over the last several years. Let me just do a little big picture framing first and then I'll tell you a little bit about the, each of the four reform areas. So the way the competition is designed, and, and many of you probably saw this from the proposed notice that we sent out, there are two types of uh, criteria that we have outlined. There are state reform conditions criteria, and those are the laws, the legal structure, the frameworks within states that are conducive or not to education reform happening. And those are things for which states will earn points in the competition for having accomplishments, so for having laws that are conducive to education reform happening. Um, that is a reward for accomplishments, not for plans, so intentions to change things in the future don't count in that section, that's about what's happened. Then there are state reform plan criteria, and those say, okay, if you win this grant, what are you gonna do with the money? And those are the plans that are covered in each of the different four reform areas. And it is a very, very sort of broad, flexible pot of funds that have very, very few restrictions on them. And states can use them in whatever ways best meet their needs and their plans for their context. So there are four areas in which these reforms um, are happening. And they are, I think probably most of you know this, so I'm not gonna take too much time here, but college-ready standards and assessments is one. The next one is having great teachers and great leaders in every classroom with a particular focus uh, both on evaluation systems and how we know who the great teachers and leaders really are, what we do with that information, how we use it to make decisions, including, very importantly, decisions about trying to make sure that our best teachers and leaders are in the classrooms where they're needed most. The next area is using data to inform instruction. And there's two different parts of that. One is the, state, uh, the statewide longitudinal data systems that have gotten you know, a lot of attention and focus uh, through, education reform uh, through education grant programs over the past few years. But also instructional improvement systems, those systems at the classroom and school level that help really drive uh, education change and give teachers and principals the information that they need to make good instructional decisions on a day-to-day -day basis. And then the last area is paying attention to our, our most persistently um, underperforming schools and saying that we have to actually tackle the job of turning around those lowest achieving schools. So it's about identifying which schools those are and putting in place serious plans for significantly turning around those schools.